We are here today with fiddle player Fred Carpenter. Uh, Fred has recorded and toured with many artists such as George Strait, uh, Ronnie Millsap, Tony Rice, and Milou Harris, along with many others. Uh, he has also received an IBMA award and a Grammy nomination for his fiddle work with uh, Murder on Music Row. He is also the owner of the violin shop, which is where we are today. So Fred, tell us how you got started playing the fiddle. Uh, I started as a young boy, a uh, violin student, okay. in the state of Vermont. I was living back there and there was a string program and mm -hmm. I had some friends doing it. It looked like fun. Mm -hmm. So I gave it a whirl and um, after a few years we moved to Maine and, and I got another teacher over there and then that sort of was my beginning of it. It was a classical violin star. Okay, okay. So what is the difference between a classical violinist and a fiddle player? Well, it's a style of music. Um, it's uh, sort of just some basic, uh, a lot of difference in the wrist and the arm movement. Um, a classical player is reading note for note from the music okay. and trying to sort of uh, interpret it the way the composer may have wanted it to be, mm -hmm. you know, with their own something to say too, we hope, you know. But <laughs> a fiddle player, a lot of times it's learning the melody and just play whatever notes seem to work sure. for you and, you know, it's not so off the page. You know. What would you consider yourself? Um, any more a fiddle player. Okay. Yeah, okay. not much of a reader anymore. Okay. <laughs> Fred, I know that you worked with Tony Rice very early in your career, so yes. tell us what was that like? It was great. Uh, I was about 22 and uh -huh. it was pretty exciting. I uh, moved from Maine to California to play with the Tony Rice unit, so I was pretty excited. Mm -hmm. It was um, a lot of music, uh, music work and not a lot of actual going out there and playing huh. at first. A lot, of, a lot of practicing and we went and did a couple records in the next couple years for Rounder. Toured a little bit, but mostly just worked on the recordings and worked on uh, just Sounding good at the gigs. Cool. So after Tony Rice, what came next for you? Um, that was about the mid-80s. I actually went to Missouri for a while and, mm -hmm. and worked with the Dillards and uh, the Darlin family. And then eventually came to Nashville and um, worked here with several artists um, from about late 80s till the mid-early 90s. Okay. And then I sort of got off the road and started working in a violin shop. Cool. Fred, tell us about the violin shop. Well, when I moved to Nashville, I had been uh, apprenticing earlier with a guy in California, so <laughs> I sort of had some chops about repair and rehairing and things. So I started that as a second thing behind the music, and within five or six years of being in town, they sort of flip-flopped, and I got off the road, and, and the shop's been growing. It's been 23 years now. Wow, so we do great. the usual repair, rentals, sales, um, have a lot of great fiddle players that come in over mm -hmm. the years and have, have been coming in for a long time. So. so here's the little thing in the key of G you could try at home. So if I break that down, it's 
Starts on the high string, the E string. First half, second half. First half. Second half. So the whole thing slowed down. Well, Fred, tell us about the Fiddle Masters Concert Series. What is it? Where do you get it? That kind of thing. Well, it's a series of DVDs available on Mel Bay. Okay. It's, uh, it was something I just sort of got crazy in the mid-2005-06 area. I decided to build out a concert room in here mm -hmm. and uh, throw some cameras up and, and uh, film some live shows. And I, you know, assembled a bunch of fiddlers over the next few years, and we recorded it on four or five cameras, and we really uh, are proud of our little Fiddle Masters concert series <laughs> on DVD. Tell us about the duo that I've been hearing lots about, uh, Carpenter and May. This has been a lot of fun for me. Uh, have, after being away from playing music in the shop here mm -hmm. for 15 or 16 years, um, Tim and I started working on a little thing to play a Strings Magazine concert. And one thing turned to an, into another, and we sort of uh, went in the studio and made this record last year. And um, it came out last fall, and it went number one the first month on Folk wow, Radio. So we're, we're excited. We're out there doing some dates. Uh, these days to promote it, and um, Charlie Chadwick on bass, it's a pretty strong little trio. Great. Well, Fred, most fiddle players use the carpenter jack on their uh, fiddle. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that and how you came up with the idea. I was just sort of out of need. I got tired of the little eighth-inch things that went with most pickups, so mm -hmm. I, I came up with this little quarter-inch idea of a chin rest hardware, and we molded these pieces and you know, been selling ever since. The carpenter jack. There you have it. It'll never be enough, and I won't take less than your love. Fred, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. It's always interesting to learn more about you, and thank you to the violin shop as well. Thank you, Erica. It was my pleasure. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>